Hey Chatty Patty Girl, welcome back to the media chat room where the celebrity headlines are talking. And today we're going to be talking about the problems that Wendy Williams' family may be facing as Wendy sits under guardianship. Back in 2022, Wendy Williams was appointed a guardian for financial management because at the time her bank reported that someone was financially exploiting her. Therefore, a guardianship was put into place appointing Sabrina Morrissey as her guardian. Soon thereafter, she terminated the power of attorney of Wendy's son, Kevin Jr. As it was reported that he spent hundreds of thousand dollars of Wendy's these money. Although that may seem alarming to the regular everyday person, when Wendy was on her talk show, she made it publicly known that she financially helped her son. In addition, Kevin Jr. stated that his mother had always given him permission to take money anytime he needed, therefore giving him access and permission not exploiting. But nonetheless, ever since Wendy has been known to be under guardianship and excluded from her family, the public started to get real concerned, raising questions as to who was providing guardianship over Wendy if it wasn't her family. So you already know how the internet do, they start digging. And they always come with they shovel and, and they were able to discover Wendy's guardian Sabrina Morrissey is facing a $30 million lawsuit for perpetrating a baseless guardianship over Jose Verdugo for personal financial gain. They also found that the judge presiding over Wendy's case, Lisa Sokoloff, appoints guardianship to attorneys who financially donate to her campaign. At this time, during the investigation, it does not appear that Morrissey donated to Sokoloff's campaign funds. However, her motives are still up for question as she appears to con people into guardianship for financial gain. Now, we're about to get into some of the findings that were uncovered during the investigation of Judge Sokolov. But first, I'm going to need you to like and share this video with everyone that you know. Also, subscribe to the channel so that you can become an official Chatty Patty lover. And I promise, you're going to love it here. And last but not least, turn on your notification bell so that you know when we drop our next video or go live. More than 108,000 people in our area live under court-appointed guardianships. Our investigation found a number of issues within the adult guardianship systems in New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut. They include courts not keeping track of guardianship records and guardian fees, guardians filing incomplete paperwork, courts not having sufficient oversight of guardians, and people questioning the power provided to guardians, including the ability of guardians to isolate people from family and friends. Now, before we uncover some of the findings that were discovered in the New York Guardianship Program, let's first tap into the documentary that was shot on Lifetime called Where's Wendy Williams? This documentary sparked an outrage with Wendy fans because it gives an inside glimpse and confirmation of people that surrounding Wendy Williams who's not taking care of her and isolating her from her family. Now, originally, her family even received backlash because no one understood why Wendy Williams was doing this documentary as it appears to show her health in decline, showcasing her recent diagnosis with dementia. However, her family seems to be grateful of what this documentary should have revealed, which is her need to be around family and a judge overturning the guardianship of Wendy from a complete stranger to her family, whose only intentions for her is to get better. Now, Wendy's guardianship is coming up for renewal soon, and her brother did an interview with E.T. stating that the family will be a part of that process. She is my sister, you know, because all this distance in between has created such a wedge, and then you have all the people involved. And then you have social media and everything. Do you think, though, that she would have been able to get the help that she needed if this documentary wasn't done? Because now it feels like your your family's taking on a whole new fight that maybe you, they weren't doing before. It wouldn't have it wouldn't have happened for me. It wouldn't have happened without the documentary. Mm -hmm. For me, mm -hmm. because I wouldn't have I wouldn't have known how to be involved. Right. And kind of right now, and I think what I'm buckling now, what I'm thinking is. The, the the regret, the regret, to, you know, because I wish I was on board sooner. It was mentioned in the documentary that uh, her guardianship comes up for review once a year. Do you know when the next review is? And are you guys as a family prepared to be involved in that conversation? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, we're all prepared to be part of that conversation. I know definitely I am. I'm looking forward to it. And unfortunately, I don't know when that uh, that renewal date's coming up or um, when that conversation's going to be had. I'm hoping maybe sometime this week. What is it that the family wants for Wendy? I want the family to become the guardian. And you guys are ready to take care of her? 100%. We have a certain degree of intellect and we can, you know, definitely kind of, you know, pull and figure things out. So there's no doubt in my mind that we'll be able to help Wendy. You know, I, I think that, you know, the, the guiding light for her that would really set us aside from anybody else um, would be the, that we have a love for Wendy. Got it. You know, and we have her, we truly have her best interest in mind. Now, although the family may be hopeful as to what this documentary reveals, there's still a big fight ahead of them and a system to take down. 
Eyewitness News investigative reporter Kristen Thorne found a concerning link between the guardianship judges in New York City and campaign donations made to them by the people they later appointed to guardianship cases. Guardians are paid by their wards, the people they take care of. In many cases, guardians can bill whatever they want, sometimes $600 to $800 an hour. The donations to the judges are not illegal. But as Kristen found out, some of those trying to reform the guardianship system in New York wonder, is it ethical? When the guardian for Nathaniel Lamar wanted to sell Lamar's multi-million dollar townhouse in Cobble Hill, Judge Lisa Otley appointed as the broker a lawyer she knew from a previous guardianship case, which is allowed under the law. The lawyer netted $210,000 in commission from the sale of the property. We found that three years before that, the lawyer, Michael Benjamin, donated $500 to Judge Otley's election campaign. Benjamin told us the donation was not a conflict of interest, and a spokesperson for the court system said the same, telling us judges make appointments based upon performance and availability. Both the lawyer and the spokesperson said judges cannot see who donates to their campaigns, but we put the names of the guardianship judges in New York City in the public state board of elections website and found numerous examples of judges receiving donations from guardianship lawyers. We then used the state's public guardianship appointment database and found that in many cases, those same lawyers received guardianship appointments from the judges they donated to. For example, in 2021, attorney Daniel Antonelli donated $500 to Judge Rosemary Maltabano. The judge gave him four guardianship appointments in 2022. In 2021, the law firm Karasiniti and Andrio donated $500 to Judge Charles Troya. In 2022, Judge Troya gave nine guardianship appointments to one of their attorneys. Judge Lisa Sokoloff gave seven guardianship appointments this year to attorney Paul Medeiros. We found he donated $1,000 to her this year. We brought the donation data we found to New York State Senator Brad Hoylman, the chairman of the Senate's Judiciary Committee. You can't draw a straight line between political donations and public policy. It's never that clear whether you're in the legislative branch, the executive, or the judiciary. But I will tell you this, it is concerning. When asked about the donations, a spokesperson for the New York court system said it is incumbent on judges to follow and comply with the rules governing judicial conduct, and the court hopes and believes they do. Now, since the airing of Where is Wendy Williams, her ex-husband took to Instagram to let everybody know why Wendy is now a part of this system. Now, I'm not going to read everything Big Kevin said, so go ahead and pause it so you can read it for yourself. And if you get a total different interpretation than I did, make sure you leave it in the comments to let me know. Ultimately, he blamed Dad Bob Mercury, who were the creators of The Wendy Show, for making her come back to New York after she had left for Florida under the false pretenses of her getting another show. But he threw a little sprinkle sprinkle in there on a sister too, basically saying that she was naive and didn't know what she was doing, allowing Wendy to leave the state of Florida without having control over Wendy's affairs. Now this definitely is a sad situation and all anyone can do is hope for the best. Because as you heard from the investigation, according to the New York court, it is the responsibility of the judge to do what's right and to follow the laws that are made for the judicial system. Now, not only do they hope that they're doing it, they believe that they're doing so it. So that means even as Sabrina Morrissey is found to be guilty of coercing people into guardianship without any need or cause for her own financial gain, she can be removed as guardian over Wendy. But the judge has the power and discretion to appoint anyone they see fit in that position. Now, Chatty Patty, it's time to hop in those comments. Let me know your whole entire take on the Wendy documentary, as well as your thoughts of her being underneath guardianship. Who do you blame? And do you think it would be possible for her family to even become her guardian? Let me know all your thoughts. And before you go, make sure that you like like and share this video with everyone that you know. Also, hit the subscribe button so that you can become an official Chatty Patty lover. And I promise you're going to love it. And last but not least, turn on your notification bell so that you know when we drop our next video or go live. Now, you already know how I do it. First thing first, I'm headed straight to the comments to see what you had to say. Then it's back to getting into the headlines so that I can bring you all another video. So that's going to be all for now. And until next time, bye-bye.